First training so, today, but you know, yeah. feeling good. And how did that go for you? Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, just good to be back, like just to be kicking the ball again. Even you know, um, it was just good to be back, see the lads again. Mm-hmm. Even though we're split into two tens, but kind of got to see everyone. So um, you know, it was good. Was that the best part of it, though, that you got to see everybody and everyone yeah. back together as such? That that side of it probably was it. They are teammates, so like, um, you know, we've all bonded, you know, throughout the years. Some boys who have been there for years, some boys who just, you know, come in the door really at the start of the season. You know, we all bonded quite well, and it's just a shame the way things went really. And um, it's just good to see everyone again. It's, you know, all the smiles are on the lads' faces. They're going to kick a ball around again, you know. It's like, uh, you know, little little kids on Christmas morning getting those. <laughs> That never changes, does it? <laughs> huh? That I'll never ne- changes anyway, does it? <laughs> no, never. But never. Um, I suppose as well, there would have been a few players in the squad that say they had a few niggly injuries at the start of the season as such. Like, those players probably are raring to go now, I'd say, are they? I know Patrick uh, yeah. McElhenney has suffered from a few Every injury. Every player's raring to go, like, so. Yeah. It feels, you know, we've been, what, it's been since March, middle of March, mm. since mm. we've last got to really football really uh, together you know that's a long um, so um, you know, it's good to be back see everyone get to kick a ball around again and train hard and you know get ready for whatever the outcome is exactly yeah hopefully it's a good outcome but anyway hopefully. you started your career at Merview United that's right isn't it you're from I think Loch Ray in Galway isn't it yeah, yeah from yeah. Loch nice um, did you always want to be a footballer Pat or was there anything else oh. in your mind Always want to be a footballer. Um, you know, I'm, I, I, uh, you know, big Berlin town like, and um, I played all sports growing up as young lads do. Really, um, always preferred um, soccer. Really, so um, you know, that's kind of the route. I took. Um, moved around a bit when I was younger because just trying to progress, trying to get better all the time, and you know, uh, starting off in, uh, uh, you know, locker would really have it to me. You know, we had a field. To and we had a we had a play, play match, and that was really it. You know, yeah, people were kind of looking after us, but they wouldn't really know much about the game. But you know, they have the love of the sport, you know, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So um, they would have looked after us, and um, yeah, I just felt like I had to progress. And kind of I played for back low in that lone league, and then I eventually went to Merview when I was under sixteen. That's how it went. Yeah. And when did you move to Bristol then? How old were you? I was just turned 19 when I, when I signed for Bristol. Literally right. signed for Bristol on my 19th birthday. Um, course, yeah, yeah it, was, it was a good experience. Um, you know, learned a bit of you know, the rootlessness of the game back then. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was a good experience. Uh, but, you know, we were a bit lucky. Actually, me and Jimmy Kiwan signed together. Uh, uh, I really know my position. I think Jimmy is in my I was playing like defensive midfielder, playing off, really, yeah? <laughs> yeah, off the left, and then um, obviously I was up top. Then the odd time, but not over in Bristol when a, yeah. um, a few days. So I p- kind of filtered around a lot of positions, and you know I always wanted to be a striker. But were you, you know, a striker actually at Merview when you're there before? Like, yeah, I yeah. was like on and off really. I was actually more in midfield like a lot. Um, even you know playing underage football for Merview. Um, me I think it's kind of strengthened the team down the spine, but they used to put me up top as well mm-hmm. quite a bit too. So, you know, I had a, I got to learn, you know, quite a bit like um, in a lot of positions. As I was getting older, you know, I really needed to spend down, you know, what I was really going to be. And, you know, that didn't kind of, that didn't really happen until after Bristol coming home. Mm. Did you find it difficult as a young fella going over to England? If, if, if you forget about the football side of it for a minute, did you find that difficult? At the start, it was just like a real excitement, you know, a kind of that nervous energy kind of, you know, I, I I drove over, you know, first time to drive to Dublin even to get to the ferry. And then 
got off of Hollyhead, had to drive all the way to Bristol from Hollyhead. So, yeah. you know, things like that can be yeah. eight years of age, yeah, or 19 in you know, a couple of days' time. And it was just, it was just a mad, ex- it was a mad experience for me. And that just in that a- aspect, like you know, going over signing for a club that nearly got promoted to the Premier League the year before, and um, it was kind of surreal, really. But it, it, it was just a lot of excitement. But you know, I went from part-time football to full-time, you know, in a blink of an eye, yeah. just like that. Wasn't used to it at all, but I really enjoyed it. But Coppa left after two weeks. That was the problem. Oh, that happens a lot, doesn't it? I hear, I hear a lot of players mention things like that where they sign for a manager and the managers, especially in a different league in a different country, yeah. it's even more difficult, isn't it? Well, I think we, he was he would have probably seen Jimmy as kind of a development project, so he probably would have put a good bit of work into us and you know kind of looked after us in that kind of sense because he's the one who brought us over. Like, did he have Kevin Doyle at Reading, or am I wrong? Yes, he did. Yeah, Kevin and Shane yeah. Long. He signed, yeah. signed Kevin and Shane Long. Cork, yeah, yeah. Um, the same. So he obviously had his his eye on the Irish market a wee bit there too. He, didn't he? Yeah. So uh, Pat yeah. Doyle was the one who got Kevin Doyle and Shane Long over to Reading when he was the manager. And yeah. Pat Doyle got me and Jimmy over. Mm. So, uh, so we, Pat got all of his over basically. Yeah, he got. Yeah. Uh, he got me and uh, Jimmy over. At the time, yeah. Mm. So Steve got one really put a shebang and things a little bit, did it? I kind of did, really. Uh, um, you know, training with the first team, but it was like it was a good learning experience. Oh, yeah. but there was no games at the end. We weren't in the reserve league. We got to play reserve games. The odd, you know, I think I played the whole course that year, like ten reserve games or something. So you know, it, it wasn't much. Um, got to play against good opposition, decent opposition. Mm. So that was the that was the plus side, but. Um, it, it was difficult because you know they didn't really help me work on my game, and, I, and you know I needed help, mm. especially when I was playing midfield. And I, even the little team passing the ball forward, like you know, like I used to always just get on the ball and start spraying it about the pitch. Like that, that mm. was why I, I done. Um, no one really told me how to tread balls or split, you know, split, split their, you know, midfield with passes and all. And even if, what, why like, do you think that was though? Well, I, behind that. Looking, I'm looking back now. It's always easy to look back. So I'm yeah. like, I'm more experienced now, and I know, you know, how to play the game now. But back then, I didn't really know much about the game. I was just kind of, you know, I was, yeah. you know, a footballer who really enjoyed playing, and I, you know, playing decent at, for my age at the level I at at Merview. Like, um, yeah, just no one really helped me develop my game when I was there. It was good development. On my own, really, like you, you, you mm. take it on your own. I suppose you're kind of thrown in deep, and that. But in terms of coaching, that wasn't really um, helped, really. Yeah, that's a, it's a new, unusual. And so you came back down to Ireland. You, you played with Merview again, wasn't it? I went back to Merview, yeah, just because. Went so back to Merview. and stuff. Yeah, just back under Johnny Glynn again, who took yeah. underneath yeah. the wing. Like I was very down coming back, like you mm. know. I can understand how players can, you know, fall out of the game and stuff like that coming home from England because what you one minute you think you've met the next minute yeah. you know you're back home and uh you feel like you're disappointing everyone, friends, family. No, it's not easy at all, but uh, you know, I had a good person there to look after me, Johnny Glenn put me underneath his wing again and I kinda got going again with Merview for a half season, then played the following season after and I don't, he put me up at and I done quite well from reviews. And how did the move for uh, move to Dundalk come about again for you? Well, Stephen Kenny was. Um, I don't think he would, he would have been in a job at the time, so obviously he would have been watching games and stuff. And mm-hmm. he actually played there in the FAI Cup and we got back six one. Um, but I scored that day. Actually, a screamer I scored like thirty five yards. <laughs> More uh, importantly, <laughs> the result I actually had a decent game personally that day, yeah. and um, I heard he was at it. And then, then he watched. We played Saul Hill because Saul Hill, you, Devin used to be in yeah, the league yeah. as well, and he watched that game in Galway on a wet, windy night, and the football wasn't the best. We were down ten men after fifteen minutes. And, um, 
yeah, he apparently was at that game and that was kind of two games he seen me in and he signed me then when he became the Dundalk manager. So he was watching those games before he even became Dundalk manager? Yeah. His dedication. <laughs> yeah, sir. Was, um, you know, obviously he'd have a lot of content. Yeah. You know, yeah. talk, stuff like that. Because um, I had a chance to sign for a few clubs that year um, after that good mm-hmm. season interview at uh, Longford. Uh, where Tony Cousins was the manager and then they nearly signed for Limerick I was this closer signing to Limerick I even met Pat Scully in in, in Gort and then um, mm-hmm. met him really liked him really enjoyed what he had to say about him he wanted me to play as an over nine and stuff like that and then he got the sack later so in other words if he wasn't sacked you probably would have moved there probably because it would have yeah. been uh, better for me mm. you know Going to Dundalk after you know the year they had and stuff previously would have been like I'd say Limerick would have been you know the more sensible option. Yeah, do you feel that Dundalk is a big jump at the time, maybe possibly? No, it wouldn't have been a jump at the time because yeah. Limerick, were, Limerick were in the Premier Division then as well. Yeah, that's true, yeah. So it was just logistically better, and it was only an yeah. hour yeah. an hour away from my home house. So, yeah. and you know, I, I kind of went to Dundalk really. In an unknown territory kind of way, um, you know, m- moving again. Like I know it's still in the same country, but you're moving two and a half hours away from where I'm from. Like, but it, you know, big. It was a big, you know, call. Make and you know, I, I met it. You know, I was <laughs> wasn't too bad, I suppose. After me, well, the first season I think he's finished second, didn't you? It's in 2013, that was your first season, yeah. First season, yeah, I finished second. We didn't start well. I didn't start well at all. I felt yeah. the pace straight away um, of the game. Um, yeah, how did you actually find it? Yeah, exactly. How did you find the standard? Uh, yeah. I was, you know, I was blown up after like 60 minutes games and stuff. Because he started me at the start of the season, like, um, you know, ahead of good players, like head of good striker and Vinnie Fardy, who's been around the league for a while. And um, Kenny's, even um, you know, uh, guard me before him and mm. had the first three games and we had like I think it was Shamrock Rovers, Sligo and Shelburne. And Sligo were very strong at that point. Well, they were champions, maybe I think, but anyway, go on. Yeah. Kind of easy enough. And mm. um, I remember playing that game, I was like I was just running around not doing really. And Rovers game done okay against Shelburne but blew up again, so you know, I lost my spot basically and um, didn't start a game for another, what, seven games after that. Came on against Cork, scored against Cork. That was my first ever league goal for, for Dundalk. Was that just a relief once you got the first goal though? It was, yeah, it was a relief. But like, you know, I went from Merview playing mm. in front of, you know, maybe 100 or 200 people like, and I would have never played really a big crowd before and I went all of a sudden playing in front of it was just like 2000 so for me at that age I was like a, mm. at that time was a big step up alone like so it was more like I scored a goal in front of all these people so you got that excitement in here like, I got like yeah. that yeah I got that buzz I felt the buzz and then yeah. I got more confident you know looking back I definitely got more confident and um, you know I went from strength to strength, strength that year I, I went on a Bonus score like eleven goals and in, in like mm. games or something. And, you know, I, I I think I finished with eighteen goals all together that year. Mm. Uh, first year, you know, playing in Premier Division. So, um, it was decent. Yeah, it was a good year. Second, you know, we had a chance if we bet that in in Chicago, which would have always been really tough. We would have had mm. a chance, but um, you know, beat us that night. So they were really deservedly winners overall. You probably felt though going into the following season that he's had a right chance to win the league, or did you just talk about that much? Um, yeah, we would have talked about it, yeah, mm. yeah, um, because the first you can see, um, in, in the group that we had that mm. there was a drive and determination there in terms of lads working hard, lads, um, being really professional, um doing like double sessions a day obviously you get your rest days and all but you're they were doing when we were working we were working like we were doing the gym in the morning 
and then we were training in the evening at the time. So this went on dog weren't we weren't full time, but we were acting like full time players, a lot of us. Was well, so that Stephen Kenny's kind of idea? Yeah. More or less, yeah. Yeah. So he had a great mixture of youth and mm. players and uh, you know, senior lads there as well mm. and um great mixture of age and you know, a lot of us, you know, wanted to get better and we want to be professional footballers and I think that's you know how it came about really and he knew that and straight away we were just you know if he asked us to jump you know we asked him why that's just the way it was we don't what I was told for us to do and even stuff like nights out didn't go out I think my first night out in Dundalk that year was in July time so I was in Dundalk in January I I was there for seven even going out to have a, a drink or two, ever. Mm. And I think that's that was something that was really good at Dundalk as well, in terms of discipline. Like, lads don't go out every weekend. Don't really go out if it's, if it's like a team night out. Mm. If you get one of them, and you might only get one of them, you know, you might only get that twice. It seems like you brought in a professional setup very, very quickly, and people right. off of it very quickly. Yeah, and you know that that kind of added on then to the year in two thousand fourteen, where yeah, um, we started developing even a very good pattern of play, and you know a lot of the lads were you know, machines, like the way they were running, you know, coming to you could see how fit we were, we were walking out of the tunnel, big and strong, very fit, like ready to go, anything that really hit us, like, and um, you know, I, I know it took us the last game of the season to win that year to win the league. And if we didn't win the league, that would in a uh, travesty, really, because we were, you know, cruising, kind of going to the back end of it and we nearly went away, but we got there in the end. Yeah, it was a good season overall. Like, you scored, I think, 20 league goals. I'm not sure how many you got in all competitions. I got four all together, so I had yeah. Yeah, one in Europe and the yeah. other, the other... One in Europe, two in the FAI Cup, and one in the League Cup final. So you got one or two in the League. Yeah, the League Cup final. You won the League Cup as well, so it was a great yeah. season. And the European experience, I think, you just lost out to Heidi Split, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. We, I think you scored the winner actually. And uh, we we Monday. lost we lost that one um, at home, really. Um, yeah. So we lost two 0 at home, and then we oh, went. Right. To, yeah. Even kind of chopped and changed the team a small bit, and. Um, I didn't start that game. Curtis Byrne didn't start that game. And uh, funny enough, we were the two to one go to score. <laughs> and I never forget it because there was about what sixteen to twenty thousand people at the game, and you know you couldn't hear yourself at all. You couldn't hear anyone. It was that loud in the stadium. It wasn't even half full. And <laughs> um, yeah, I remember going one all. I I made it to go one all, and then Curtis scored to make it two one, and. <laughs> Their fans were literally on their panicking. Crazy. They were on they're on their, their own players' backs like uh, you can that and we actually had a chance to win. Uh, it was a glorious chance to win, but it didn't happen and we had, they actually gave us a hand ovation while we were walking off. You know, that's it's good in one sense and in another sense it's kinda of like you know, we're a little bit. Yeah, we're professional footballers too. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, I get that part of it, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a token gesture, like, you yeah, know, you don't, yeah. But at the time, it felt great, yeah. You know, we lost the whole tie, and we would have had to go to like Kazakhstan or something like that afterwards. Yeah. And I actually don't think the club would have been able to afford it, really. So, we're yeah. they were probably better off overall. Mm. Mm. But, how'd you split? How did you find the experience compared to playing in the League of Ireland? Playing the likes of Heidi, Heidi Split in Europe. Um, in terms of the opposition you were coming uh, against, opposition, more uh, technical or? I could tell it was more technical. They were, they were like the fitness levels as well was quite high as too. Mm. And, um, you know, we didn't play bad against the minority. We just mm. conceded two sloppy goals, and in Europe, that's what happens. You get mm. uh, so. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed. I enjoyed the battle, like playing up against perhaps mm. who are. Probably on fifteen times, times more than I am, and mm. that kind of stuff. And, you know, really enjoyed it. It was good. It was good experience. 
Now you moved on. You moved to England after that. And you moved to Oxford. I think you were there for a couple of seasons. You've a few loan spells, didn't you? Grimsby uh, and uh, Stevenage, was it? And then you moved uh, on to Mansfield, I think. Yeah, that's but, um, Overall, how was the experience the second time in England? You obviously had more experience. Shite. Shite. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a funny feeling to say that. I don't know why, but um, I, I heard you speak about uh, it before, but go on. <laughs> it was good and bad. Um, looking back, <laughs> if I was the age, you know, if I was, I was, what, 24 when I was over there. So yeah. if I, my body, in that, if I had my mind now, in the mind of the 24 year old a whole different story um, mm. kind of got pushed around in terms of like with managers and stuff like that and it made it too easy for them and um, I kind of learned that in my first year in terms of not playing I was getting frustrated when I wasn't playing and mm. and uh, I could never understand why I wasn't playing so um, you know I, it was a tough one for me because I spent mm. a lot of picking up stupid injuries and niggles and I think I was over there for three years and I must have been injured for about 11 months of it. Ugh, yeah. um, just on and off, like groin injuries out for six weeks. Groin injury, I got a groin injury three times. Stuff like you're, that. You're basically picking up injuries and you weren't really recovering properly. Is that what it was as well? Like and You can say that, like my first training with us yeah. in November and I signed in November and I couldn't play until January. So... My first train at Oxford, there was 10 minutes left in the train. We were playing 88. The ball gets thrown to me from the keeper. And I go to head it. And I've head it, And I've gone over my head. I, I was never one to get injuries prior to all this. And then all of a sudden, I've done my ankle. Tried to get up to run. Fell flat on my face. My ankle was done. Everyone thought I did get my ankle. The ambulance was called. I was taken away in an ambulance. Got scanned and came back. I had like two grade threes done and a grade two, so I was out for three. And when you move over as well, new, you know, it is a new country, you know what I mean? New league, new experience, and that happens. It's You're moving away from the family and everything that you just, you know, you, you went from a very good setup. Yeah, I built a lot of good relationships to try and start mm. all over again. And, mm. um, you know, looking back now, I probably won't go. At I, was that go I was going to say that to you. Would you go back if, if it was the case? Yeah another year and see how it went and you know it, it's hindsight's a great thing though isn't it like uh, I reckon I would have got I reckon I would have got a, a bigger club a championship club I think I would have got if I let you know dead another year and if I don't well again I repeat it, I think I would have got a you know no disrespect to Oxford but I would have got a higher club somewhere else mm -hmm. Oxford it's didn't... probably worth the risk for players because you can always come back you know that kind of way yeah, um, you can always come back to the League of Ireland. And time that, to you know? career then too. What's that? The time can tick away in your career as well. You know, as well. I know it's a dodgy one that way. So you probably as well felt when you came back then to Dundalk. Were you a bit apprehensive then, thinking, "What if I can't pick up where I left off?" And no, like that? no, not at all. Yeah. You know, a lot happened to me as well at Mansfield. I was at Mansfield playing under a decent, a decent, decent manager who liked me a lot and. You know, there's a lot going on in the behind the scenes in terms of the chair and stuff and right. you know, making a certain player play all the time and blah, blah, blah. I um, worked my way into the team and I finally got there. And I was doing well. I scored a few goals, doing well. And then, you know, that manager then got the sack then in December. And then they bring in big Steve Evans. Um, you probably heard the name. Yeah. Uh, you know... No comment on him. <laughs> but that happens in England a lot, though, doesn't it? I think with the lower clubs, that they do. There's a lot of changes in management, and they tend to bring in managers who play a certain style of football, and then they bring in another one that plays yeah, well, a completely was, different style of football. With the first managers at Manchester, they tried to play. And yeah. Like a lot of League Two football is like bang it long. Heard that, yeah. Head kick and run, I used to call it. And so that's what it was. And when Steve Evans came in, it was it just it was a manager not for me. Like you know, I'd still give my all regardless. You know, of train and play. I always want to get. I want to play. I want to show people that I'm over here. You know, not just to be a part of the setup to make a difference. And that's how mm -hmm. I. Hope. 
I, I think mm-hmm. I could make a difference. And he liked me at the start. He was all on me at the start. He started really well for him, scored, I think, two and three. And um, then that journey, that journey window came, the magic window. He started bringing in his own players that he right. wanted. All of a sudden, we had five strikers at the club. <laughs> and, he, and he played a system where he, he was playing two like um, I found myself down in the second order out of nowhere and that's just the way it is um, yeah. nothing you can do and at that point did you realise you just had it off and you wanted to move back to Ireland basically at, at, but no at well, that point of the season I was like you know like, mm-hmm. I was, like that, that's how I felt I'll show them you know I'll keep training away and I'll show you and yeah so what happened was I heard I was meant to be he put me out on the, the answer is basically the loan to be loaned out. Uh, I actually had a very good club interest in me at the time. It was Blackpool. And I was buzzing like when I heard that. I was like, geez, I'll take that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you don't want me, I'll go and I'll do it somewhere else. And um, I scored two goals in a checker trade cup against Oldham, who are league one side of the line. Yeah. And then he took me off list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then, like, in one sense, I felt good in one sense. Another yeah, sense, no, yeah, yeah. an opportunity missed. And he, um, oh, still a nightmare. Still a next game comes, not even on the bench. And next game comes. This is him after telling me he wants me at the club. Yeah, yeah he takes you off the list, like, yeah. Yeah, so three or three, three games into, four games into January, I think it was, still on the, on the, um, the stand. The, yeah. I just, What's going on here? So I just knocked on his door, transfer deadline day, going, in the morning, going, look, yeah. you're saying you want me, but you don't want me. So yeah, and I kind of, you know, go <laughs> basically. And I, I never really felt comfortable in doing stuff like that. I didn't really like yeah. it. But well, you were thinking you don't want to be there another few, what, three or four, five. Wasting, months, and never was, and... wasting a five months of my career, I didn't mm. want to waste. You know, I wanted mm. out there and. He wasn't helping me whatsoever, and mm-hmm. he gave me the whole thing, Paddy, I want you, this, this, and that, and, you know, I'm go- I let you, you know, your age, the club, and all this, he was saying, he let me, blah, 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 but I'd be telling you in your ear, give me all this, carry on, I'd be telling you my, in your ear that I want you, and all this, blah, 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 anyway, I was like, I just wanted to go, because I just didn't trust him, really, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, not after all that. Yeah, once I, I get that into your head, there's no point staying. I made that whole transfer deadline day. I actually went to Nando's, had a bite to eat, and I was just waiting, waiting, waiting all day. And I'm ringing my agent, going, "What's going on?" He goes, yeah. "Paddy, he's, he's not letting you go anywhere." Ugh. So that that shows, and then just basically wasted the whole rest of the year. I think I played twice. What do you think was behind his thinking though there? Because uh, I would have thought we'd five strikers on the books as well that the chairman would be thinking, look, we five strikers. Look after me five strikers. Maybe he's looking after his own back, I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. see the the chairman at the time put up a war chest for him. Uh, mm-hmm. so uh, it was just I honestly I can't tell you. It's just like it's like business, it's just a business mm-hmm. really. Mm. You know, but you know when someone says they yeah. want you or they don't want you, you know yourself. Like you, you just get that sense. It was my career into consideration one bit. It was all his own game. So mm. uh, a lot of lessons learned. Really, um, mm. sort of probably went in there maybe a more angry head. Mm. Maybe mm. threw a table upside down or something. Maybe that got me. The move. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, I was going to ask you what the differences are between the English football and Irish football, but um, you've kind of touched on it there. Do you think the Irish football you're allowed to play more in the league here, in general? Think, um, well, just in League Two, League. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, compared to League Two, obviously. Yeah. Very similar in terms of football. You get a lot of teams who will try to play. Oxford tried to play. Yeah. Just, it just didn't work out for me. And they yeah. Deep end after my injury, and I wasn't match fit, and I couldn't score. If yeah. you put the ball in front of the goal, I wasn't scoring. So that's just the way it was. My confidence was a bit low and mm. um, took me like nine games to my first goal for them and they got another striker in and they started doing well and that's it. But I think the difference in the... It's just like, you know, we you, you can see our games. Don't we like to control yeah. 
we like to um, be technically good mm -hmm. at what we do and, and um, not be booming balls up to my head every two seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and so there is a difference in between the two leagues in terms of the lines of play. Well, I don't um, know. If it's the, is it the leagues or is it just the way the managers well, we have at the moment? Because Liam Buckley likes to play at Sligo, Stevie likes to play at Pats, yeah. you know, Bradley likes to play at... Uh, Sorry, Rovers. Long likes to play generally at bowls as well. So is it just that side of it, or maybe think, yeah, it's been the same really for the last how many years? I think mm. football has changed a lot since yeah. since I was watching it in two thousand and six and two thousand. Mm. Yeah. A lot, you know, the two strikers that was kind of one up top, unless you're playing a three five two. Mm. It's all changed. Um, but, like, you know, uh, what I do say is that because there's so many games in League 1 and League 2, their squads are bigger. Yeah, there is, actually, yeah. They're, it's way bigger. You know, I fully believe Dundalk should go their own in League 1, top League 1, no problem. Yeah. But you have bigger squads. Mm. So. Yeah, an awful lot of games. Like, there's 46 games, something ridiculous uh, like that, isn't it? There's over 50 games a year. Mm. Well over 50. Here. That's mental. In the league, and if you get to the playoffs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but the league's like 46. And yeah. Then yeah. It, to be honest, it's not great yeah. football, especially when you get to the winter time. It's, no. you know, those yeah. slugging months, and they're like yeah. long ball. Long ball stuff. Like, yeah. How do you enjoy playing in that, like, in fairness? I don't think how can anyone enjoy playing in that, actually. It's, <laughs> it wasn't for me, but, you know, you, I still have my all, like, but it just was not for me. Like, it just. Yeah. I found myself playing with the two up top as well over there. I found myself on the deepest midfielder a lot. And I'm mm. so far away from goal that mm. I'm not making the difference when I'm kind of battling with the two centre-halves, kind of mm. making, you know, their lives a nightmare. And then being there, score goal when the ball has been crossed into the box. With the two, I always found myself doing the duties in terms of when we didn't have the ball on their defence midfielders. Mm. Do you prefer yeah. playing with two wingers kind of flanked as such, kind of two inside forwards, not, so to speak? With someone with two up top, well, I prefer to be the one. That's what not, I mean. If there's one up top, do you prefer the guy in the middle? And then you say it's on dock, you've yourself up top generally, and then you've Duffy and McElhenney, let's say, or Mikey Kelly, whoever. Yeah. Do you prefer that kind of system? Uh, yeah, well, it takes the load off me a small bit of trying to drop in all the time, trying to get us up the pitch in terms of, you know, getting out wide, and then I've, I have to run like. 60, 70 yards to the box. Um, so, um, try to stay as high as you can. It was, very, it was very tough for me last year because we were missing certain personnel. So, I kind of had to game a small bit. But, you know, I felt at the start of this season that I didn't have to do that as much at all. You know, do my general play of getting us on the pitch, hold up the ball and, you know, try to win my battles and stuff. But, you know, getting into good areas was the main mm -hmm. focus for me. And uh, I was doing that really in the you know I five and five and I felt great yeah, and yeah. fit um so but uh that all you know kind of went came to a halt with the whole pandemic so yeah hopefully hopefully you can pick up again when we're back but um what was it 2018 you scored 29 league goals how many did you get that season was it 34 or five no it was 32 that year 32 sorry yeah no 32 yeah but that's some going isn't it um, and yeah. you brought the record as well, the Dundalk goal scoring record, which must have been there. Uh, yeah, and I, I joined the record as well of, um, what's his name from Finn Harp? So Bradley. Bradley, uh, yeah. Yeah. From I mean, 1979 or something. Yeah, I mean. Well, oh, that me coming back, you said, you said earlier on about, did I, you know, was I nervous? Or yeah. Not? apprehensive or something no not at all I was coming back to prove people a point that you know just because I certainly time, did <laughs> just because my time didn't work out in the UK doesn't mean yeah. it was, you know it was a mixture of a lot of things that happened to me in the UK and sometimes you know careers like that happen you know all the time over in the UK so mm. I came back to prove a point I, I think I did you know mm. a lot of things mm. fell to me that, that year which was great I met a few goals as well so um, it was just a very good year um, in terms of personnel and, and team-wise. You know, yeah. we won the double that year, took it back off court, really. Um, so, yeah, it was just a great year.
And which league title did you prefer? A lot of people say the first league titles are favourite, but the fact that you scored so many goals that season and uh, you only came back, was that your favourite season? It's, well, it would be my favourite season, but yeah. the yeah. first, uh, 2014, is, is, I'll never forget, last game of the season, you know, we the had... The best way to win it, really, if, if yeah. you could choose. If you could choose, like, because it's more yeah. excitement. And... A draw wouldn't have done it at all. So, um, you know, we beat Cork that, that year three times already well so you know um we were quite confident going into the game but very frustrated at half time because it was <laughs> we weren't doing that well and Cork had a few chances actually in the first half and um but Kenny was very good in the dress that, that that day uh got us all calm relaxed he, he sat down like he was one of us and kind of told us this is how we're going to win the game and we just kind of went out in the calmness and then it just went from there really and deservedly won it yeah, definitely. So 2019 last year, obviously Kenny left and Pert came in. But when I say came in, he was part of the furniture already. Did that make yeah. the transition easier for the players? I'd imagine it did, did it? Because he was yeah. very close to Stephen, wasn't he? Yeah, he's very close to Stephen. Yeah, I made yeah. it a bit easier um, for players and all. Um, you know, Vinny grew and grew, you know, the whole time that year as a manager. Um, with the we good boy behind him as well, with... Um, you know, Giller and Roy Higgins and uh, Donald too as well. He was there doing our video and that. So, you know, there's a lot of brains there. So it was it, it, it was good. Um, you know, we took off the rocky start and um, mm -hmm. we got over that bump and we didn't lose a league game at the end of the season then. So it was some comeback really from the start. And I suppose at the start, if you're Vinnie Pert and Kenny's just gone you're probably feeling a bit under pressure, aren't you? Especially when you have a poor start like that because of what went before. Yeah. Clearly, you yeah, he know, would... the players and he rose above but, that. Well, I think with the players that was there, uh, you know, a lot of league titles, you know, won between them and, you know, they've, they've a desire to always yeah. win every year and keep pushing on and, mm. you know, not to let up really. And um, that that's the mindset of the players. They want to win, win, win. There's a winning mentality there and, um you know, that would have definitely helped Vinny too. Um, lads who were who aren't going to be pissing about in training, who aren't going to be taking the piss. They're, they're, they're full-time professionals taking it seriously and um, that helps a lot. I think that that's what kind of impresses me with Dundalk every year. You've guys like Chris Shields and Dane Massey and Sean Gannon. Like, they've won it all and they've been there for a while now, you know, but they keep that up every year. It's the hunger and desire to drive on. Um, that's not an easy thing to do, like because no, players players can lose even if they don't know it. They can lose that little edge of hunger. But, possibly say that, but then when you have um, you know, yeah. the maintenance coming in as well, and yeah. kind of extra lift as well. You know, help, yeah. Even if it's like only one or two or three signings, mm. helps you. You know, okay, we're going again. Mm. That's that's just. The way it is, and especially as you say, if they're quality signings as well, it kind of gives everyone a kick in the arse as well. Yeah, there's always there's always a you know a, a motivation there, something you know doubters again, prove the doubters wrong again. Oh, we lost the Rovers in the cup final. <laughs> Before that, we wouldn't have lost. The, we would lost the Rovers once in eleven or something like that. Mm -hmm. and so there be there would have been a bit there as well, saying you know mm -hmm. what we, we want to retain our title, so we know it's going to be tough, but. You know, we, we ain't going anywhere. Mm. He's nearly actually won the treble last year. He touched on it there. But how disappointing was it to lose the Rovers and penalties? Was it, was it a killer? Because you're saying the winning mentality is in that group. I'd imagine any defeat just knocks everyone yeah, down a bit, does it? Yeah, it was a killer. Like, you know, we were, mm. we were missing Pastor McElhaney that day. Uh, Shields, yeah. Chris Shields, you know, I would know where we were missing Chris Shields. Yeah. Bizarre, to be honest with you. Yeah, uh, it was bizarre, yeah. We'd kind of shuffle around our team a small bit. Um, we played Sean Horn the six that day mm. with uh, Robbie Benson, mm. uh, Jamie McGrath, the right, Mickey up left, and me up top. So, you know, we were a small bit fractured in some sense. Mm. Uh, we actually didn't play well that day. We still had the better chances, mm. you know, in the game, but we didn't play that well and, you know, concede the penalty and then Mickey scored that wonder goal then to... I, I couldn't believe myself when he scored it when I was yeah. there because it was just out of nowhere and Rovers like or, yeah. and the top they had it won like literally the top yeah. they had it won and well, Duffy comes in I think Manus made a great save in extra time as well yeah 
if yeah, we had a chance an extra time. Mm. Um, but you know, uh, penalty is just a lottery, then you know. It's a lottery, yeah. And mm. you know, a few pet, few makers weren't weren't on the pitch. At, you know, for the penalty like myself, Robbie Benson, boys yeah. would have been taken penalties. I I found, you know, I think we've done well. Mm. I, I think the two boys were huge lost to us before the game. Shieldy and Patch McIlwain. Mm. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, they they won it that day, and you know, it's a bitter pill to swallow, but you have to swallow it and just move on, really. Yeah, um, quick question, Stevie O'Donnell is obviously manager of St. Pat's. So you've obviously worked with him. How, how do you think he can do in the managerial role? I think he can do extremely well. Mm. He always had that kind of aura, aura mm. about the first place, you know, playing with him. And in like, he was like a leader. He's a leader yeah. in the team. And you just have that respect straight away. Even players who were coming into the squad who signed straight away for the next day. Uh, it's just one of those things. He he drives you all the time. Even in training, he used to be, you know, always wanting more, more, more. Like my, my I remember my first season with Dundalk in 2013. I don't think he he he, he didn't stop teasing at me like, uh, which was something I needed in terms of I wasn't doing my job right. I wasn't hitting the ball at the start, and, and um, he was kind of on me all the time. Like you know, I. I I always take stuff like that in, and it kind of improved my game quite a, quite a bit from that. And um, yeah, Stephen's a fantastic leader, knows the game as well. He's very knowledgeable about the game, too, and um, I think he'll do incredibly well. Yeah, so good move by Pat then. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and Stephen Kenny now, obviously, is the new Ireland manager. Um, how do you think, what kind of traits has he got? How do you think he'll do in the job, personally, yourself? I think you'll do very well. Mm. I will bring in a sense of freedom in Irish football in terms of playing style. Um, you know, he's he's a very, very good man. Um, he's a will to win. He's a desire to always try and win games. He never goes into a game to try and, you know, nick a result. Yeah, yeah. It's not his style. Um, you know, he'll have to be given time, but I can see Ireland hopefully... Pray to God. I well, no one even they be in a total different uh, style of football, which would be good to yeah, see. Definitely. So in national football, you need to retain the ball, and um, fortunately, Ireland weren't really doing that in the last, you know, couple of years. And all well and good, you know, we fought hard, we worked hard, we scraped, you know, good results at times. Mm-hmm. But but you can do that and play good football. It's yeah, possible to do that, like, isn't it? I think that's something Stephen will bring into the into into the four there really, and um, he would be he be very good in Ireland, and I'm looking forward to seeing him flourish in it really. Definitely, and as well the work he done with the under twenty ones and the type of player that's coming through, kind yeah. of really suits what he is, doesn't it as well? Showed like you know he took over the under twenty ones and the mm-hmm. stuff while he was playing, um, you know a great sense of it was actually in that two lawn tournament where, you know. They were playing against um, quality opposition. And they held their own in terms of, you know, not. I know I'm taking the whole results out of the game. I'm on about possession football, and they, you know, they held their own um, very well over there. And they, what they got the semi final got beat by Brazil two 0 So, yeah. you know that like you would have never seen that really before. You'd always seen the underage going into tournaments and be playing similar to the senior team, and and it's you know it's not behind the ball. Yeah, so, you know you can get players yeah. behind the ball, but you can do it in yeah. a different manner, can't you? As well, and you know you can attack. It was, it was, you know, it was a breath of fresh air to keep, you know mm-hmm. see you know, play football the right way. Mm-hmm. You know, a couple of games in Thailand, they could actually he had very similar, like it was quite similar watching, you know, how to we would play really. So, really, yeah. Yeah. Out, yeah. You can notice a few things. I don't notice a few things, it was, which was good to see too. So, you know, he's a very clever man and. No, I think he'll do very well. Mm. So obviously the players have adopted had adopted what he tried to do at Dundalk very quickly then, you would have thought. Yeah. yeah. He, that sense of belief that you can beat anyone. Mm. That's that's what he's very good at. He mm. he has you going into any game you can win it. Um, regardless who you're playing. If you're playing in Europe. He just well, gives he scores it. against Europe. I don't think you were there, but the beat back to uh Barslov three 0 at home. Oh uh, yeah. Um, most, you were probably leaning at the time, were you? Most, I thought the most impressive game I watched was they, um, you know, battered Zenit at home. 
that's it, yeah. I forgot about that one, yeah. And they ended up losing that game 2-1. Yeah. But and the then, way they played it, yeah, yeah. Great chance to, you know, to go 2-0 up at the time. And, you know, I thought they'd done very well that night. Mm. You know, that's the kind of belief, you know, Stephen puts in the players, like, kind of freedom. Mm. You know, express yourself in the final third kind of stuff. Express yourself on the ball. And that's what he wants. And that's what that's what you need in international mm. football. I think, that's, that's, I think it's what fans want to see more often anyway even if you were to lose a game you know if you can see that you don't come out of a nil-nil draw where we put everyone behind the ball and frustrated and angry but if you play a team a good side and say just say you lose the game but you're put those principles in play that you're talking about I think fans will appreciate that more and understand that there's a bit of a process here as well you know yeah that's what I'm saying he need, he need to be given time but absolutely yeah Steen's very good at walking into you know, like he was with the twenty ones, like he was with Dundalk walking in and, you know, seeing what he wants and, and implementing it. So I I think he'll do the same as for, for so looking yeah. forward. Yeah, well, personally I'm looking forward to it anyway. Um Pat, the best player you've played with in your career so far. I've answered this question before and it's gonna be the same answer, Patch McLaney. Nice quality though, isn't he in fairness? Yeah. <laughs> He does, he does things out of nowhere, but yeah. so hard to, to like obviously because there's different types of players as well. You can put in yeah. then Mickey Duffy, Daryl Horgan, um, Stephen O'Donnell, but like you know, Fats has a bit of everything. He's mm. you know, he glides with the ball at his feet, he's left foot, right foot, you know, he's a bags of tricks as well. He can put the ball on your toe from 60 yards with his left foot with ease, and it's just um. And he's just, he's a great eye for pass as well. He's passing so good. Um, true passes, true balls and everything. Um, mm. Three assists, I call them. Um, he's very good at them. He's a he's, he's quality, quality player. And I enjoy Because he's been a bit of a miss for you guys, hasn't he? He's been in and out through injury. Yeah. And, um, you know, just shows good siders as well, that you can still win with the likes of him out, you know, through injury. Yeah, 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 definitely. definitely. But then um, the best... Player then, Pat, sorry, you played against. See, there's... Uh, I played against, you see... I'll I tell have, you what, right? We'll say the League of Ireland and then we'll say outside the League of Ireland, okay? Right. The League of Ireland. The mm. player, so, like, they will have to be picking centre-half, so I'm not going to... Uh, <laughs> um, They're too boring. <laughs> best player, well, 2013, Killing Brendan was phenomenal that year. Yeah, he was player of the year, actually, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah he was, yeah. Well, yeah. that year, he was, he was so good, like... Um, yeah. And they'd keep Fatty in that team as well. Yeah, it was unbelievable that year. He got player of the year that year, and... Um, to be fair, like, it's very hard to choose, because all the yeah. years in here, outside that 2013, like, you know, I, I was playing with the best players. Mm. That's true as well, you were, yeah. yeah. So... You know, I was playing with the, you know, we wouldn't be known as the best players at the start, but, you know, the, the boys always improved. Yeah, but all. you were playing with Daryl Horgan, for example, and players of that, and maybe Richie Tell, I, or, I, or did I, you play with Richie, yeah? You know, in the last couple of years, you know, Jack Burns quality, you yeah. can see he's, he's quality, you know, on the ball, he's he, he needs to be stopped, like, he needs to put his head, get his head down as soon as possible. He's on the ball. That's, that's where I think he's missed Chris Shields in the final, actually, in my opinion, I think, but, yeah. Or like when he's on the point, be careful. Yeah, but, um, yeah. So that they do really. And then outside, I played against I played against uh, Southampton when I was at, at Oxford in a in a friendly, and I was up against. We played against seven Premier League players that year. That year, and the centre half pair, Stephen Cocker, who was at South, who was at Burrs as well. Burrs, yeah. And I played against Van Dyke. Yeah, I've heard this one. <laughs> and Van Dyke played with a cigar in his mouth. Really, like? It was really? like, just, you, you can see, like, it, I could tell that he didn't really, he wasn't too bothered about the game, kind of more for his fitness, so he wasn't really going into tackles with me, even though... But I was, he was still brilliant kind of thing. Yeah, but he was like, he was slapping balls from, from right to left on players' toes on the run, like, they were on the run, and he's putting oh. right onto them, like, it was with him. And um, he still wouldn't be in the full package then, but you could see yeah. see, yeah. see what he has. Um, but yeah, he didn't really want to 
put in a battle. He was kind of nearly probably let me have it at times because he didn't want to, you know, probably get injured or something at the time. So, yeah, yeah been right up there. He had it spread that day. He was unbelievable. Yeah. He was quality. Tadic. Get near him. <laughs> near him, wasn't he? That's good. Was it, was it otherworldly in many ways? <laughs> All these well. So they were being the, yeah, that's really. Well, we'll finish off Pat, with a few teammate questions. You may have answered this one already, but I'll go for it anyway. Most skillful player at Dundalk? You see, right now, so I'd say Patch McElhaney, but yeah. then we're after signing um, Nathan. And he is a bag of What you see in training. Yeah, he's a bag of tricks. He's a lot up his sleeve. So between Patch McElhaney and him, really. Good to have options like that, isn't it? Yeah. Who's, the, who's the hardest trainer? I'd say that's difficult to pick. That would be difficult to pick. Mm. The hardest trainer. I'll put Sean Hoare up there. Sean Hoare, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Everyone, That's an honour, I'd say, for him, because I can imagine you talked about the mentality of the squad. like so. Everyone, yeah, fair yeah. Right. Everyone really mm. you know, puts it in, really, in training. Um, mm. Very competitive. I'd say so. Very competitive. Yeah. But, so everyone puts it in. It'd be, it'd be wrong for me to... I could name... I know. Uh, but I'd say Sean Hoare. Give him the credit. Give him the credit. Who's the hard man? Who, who thinks they're the hard man? <laughs> hard man. <laughs> Who would be the hard man? Uh, I wouldn't say they would think it. But they'd know they were like kind of hard. Sean Hoare again. Really, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he, he's that thick head on him. <laughs> um, like he can get very angry, Sean. It explodes. Um, is that with himself or with others around them? With just everything. It's well, with everything. Um, <laughs> um, Andy secretly he's kind of quiet, but he'd be he'd be hard as he'd be hard too. He he he'd be the hard man. Uh, most Arts, game. Guards, there's love. There's like a good few in there who'd be quite you know hard. Like I I give as good as I get too. So yeah. I yeah. do that out there. So yeah, good few of us. Who's the most vain? Who can't get themselves out of the mirror? <laughs> hmm. Um. Since Garth's got that hair transplant, I'm gonna say Brian. Gray. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna go for one of the young lads. <laughs> no, no, I, I'll, I'll give you it know, to him. And wait for the banter later on in the group. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the biggest moaner? Me. Really? Yeah. Straight off the bat, it's me. Yeah, it's me. And what kind of things would you moan about? Everything. Everything. Like, if I don't think the standard's up, I'll moan. But that's a good thing, though, as well. In terms it is. Of, yeah. And the lads get sick of it, I suppose, at times. But that's just the way I am. I <laughs> moan, moan, moan. And it's just, well, like, do you be more moany on the pitch when you're playing or more in training? Or does it matter? Both. Mm. Both. Mm. Both. So you, want... you train well, like you play, kind of, do you? Yeah. It's yeah. just how I am. Like, I just want to win all the time. And yeah, exactly. I'm, really, I'm going to show it, like... It's kind of a fault of mine. It's kind of a good uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. Body could always give off different, you know, you know, mm. different examples, I suppose. Um, sometimes it happens at uh, the level I play at, I find sometimes if I moan, I put myself off my own game as well, though. That can nah, happen. Uh, you know, I. <laughs> oh, doesn't put me off, no. Doesn't happen, no. <laughs> I get a bit and I'm just gone. <laughs> oh, like, like the standard to be high, and if I yeah. don't, I'll just. I'll speak my mind, kind of, and it's mm. could be a good thing, could be a bad thing at times. But you know, it's always forgotten about when training's over. Like, so that's the mm. main. Thing. But you need people like that to keep the standards up. Biggest joker. Biggest joker. Yeah. Who is the biggest joker? Who's the biggest? Yeah, I played a lot of tricks. Like, do you know, in, in the engine room, yeah. yeah. You probably heard the story that I put Patch McElhaney's trainers up on, but fire told them tied into a firework and three rockets. Yeah. I, think I heard that. Big <laughs> bang ever. Burnt his shoe as well. Is that a joke or is that just nasty? <laughs> I, or I, it was called payback. Anything, ah. anything that happens, Shields, he's one like are brilliant. Yes, he is. Oh, he's the best designers in the world. Like, he just always come back very quick, very witty, Shields. Witty, yeah, yeah, yeah. And same with Gano as well, one liners. You can get in Gano's skin, but he loves the one liners. <laughs> 
Very good. But you need that at a club as well, though. Don't you? You're on about the mentality and the hard training and all. That, that goes with it, though, doesn't it? Different characters all the time. And, you know, we have a good laugh as well, as, you know, as well as being, as well as being serious all the time, too. So. Yeah, you have to. You have yeah. to. Pat, thanks very much for coming on. Really appreciate Thank it. Um, and best of luck. Hopefully the new season starts soon. So best Great. of luck to you, all right? Thank you. Thank you.